Welcome to the Air Gun Show. In this week's episode, I'm taking a look at a compact compressor that could turn out to be a real game changer for PCP shooters struggling to get access to bottle filling facilities. But first up, I'm taking out the brand new Brocock Safari XR on its first ever hunting trip. Right, I'm out on what should be quite an exciting shoot today. I'm in the woods and I'm going to be targeting grey squirrels, which is pretty typical, but rather than targeting them at a feeding station as I usually do, I'm going to adopt more of a roving approach. Now, that should make the shooting a bit more interesting and it will definitely make it more challenging. The other reason that I'm excited is because it's my first outing with the new Brocock Safari XR. Now, the real standout feature on this gun is that Safari stock. Um, it's got a really nice rough cut finish which apart from being really really grippy also just looks really at home in the field and in the woods. And on top of that this gun's also got a really slick new magazine system and that's driven by a really smooth side lever mechanism. It's kitted out with Picatinny rails plus you get all the usual XR features including adjustable power and a really nice two-stage trigger unit. Now this is the sub 12 foot-pound model but high power versions are available in excess of 55 foot-pounds. Now I've been shooting this one quite a lot on my garden range and I'd say it's probably best described as a match accurate hunting gun. I've set up the Safari with a Mamba light scope from MTC which is one of my absolute favourites and as ever that's held on with sports match scope mounts. Now, as for ammo, this gun's been doing the absolute business with Rangemaster Sovereign pellets. So, that's the setup for today. Let's see if we can put it to good use. There's one up in the field maple, mate. Let's see if we can get to that ash tree. This is not the quietest of ground to move across, especially with a cameraman in tow. But this squirrel is reluctant to leave its spot in the late winter sunshine and holds its position. Well, that was a great start. We were just coming through the woods I saw a squirrel scrabbling around, looked like it was enjoying that bit of sun, up in a field maple. I think it spotted or heard us because it froze, but I wanted to get in a little bit closer so I could lean against this tree and take a rested shot. It's probably about 25 metres, but the safari really did deliver the goods. I think that squirrel was dead before it hit the ground, so let's get it picked up and keep moving. It's great to have one in the bag, but I'm eager to add more. The trick with a roving squirrel shoot like this is not to be in too much of a rush. After every few steps, I stop to scan the trees for signs of my quarry. Not just looking ahead, but also around and back to the trees I've just passed. I've spotted another squirrel, 
Just like the first one, it seems to be aware of us, but it has frozen. I'm hoping that it will stay there while I nestle myself in for another supported shot with the safari. See that one was really solidly hit. In fact, I'm sure it was stone dead, but I was wondering for a moment if it was going to drop. And just as I was thinking that it was probably going to be hung up there, it dropped like a stone. Uh, that one was probably about the same range as the first one, about 25 meters, maybe a touch more. And again, I just stalked in so that I could get a leaning shot using the tree to support the gun. And I really do not regard that as cheating. It is just taking advantage of the opportunity to take a rested shot and ensure that that, clean, uh, that kill is a clean one. Right, let's go and get it picked up. Right, we've got a couple in the bag. But dusk is starting to set in now. I expect we've probably got about an hour of useful light left. So what I'm going to do is head to a pen where there are a couple of pheasant feeders. Now squirrels usually like to fill their bellies before they settle down for the night. I shoot there quite frequently, usually see a few about. So I'm going to head there now and see if we can't get one or two more shots. Right, well I don't want to talk too much now because I'm in the release pen and the squirrels aren't going to put up with it if I make a lot of noise, but um, I'm sat about 25 metres from a pair of feeders, so quite a comfortable range. It's a really ugly hide, but what I've done, there are a couple of black plastic platforms. They're redundant now, but the keeper was using them to stop heavy water butts from sinking into the ground. So what I've done is prop them up behind this tree just to create a bit of a backdrop to hide my silhouette. Now when I've been here in the past, that's been sufficient cover. I haven't needed a net in front of me, so all being well, it'll be enough for us to outwit these squirrels tonight. Oh, that's not what we were hoping for, but that's obviously who the feed was put out for, and it is nice to see that the pheasants are getting a look in. Uh, the keeper here is actually a good friend of mine, and he's always grateful for a bit of help controlling the great grey squirrels, so I just hope we'll get the opportunity to nail one or two more. And the opportunity that I'd been waiting for does eventually come along, in the shape of a feed raiding squirrel. That one couldn't resist the feed. I think it clocked me though, because it froze just as I was lining up for the shot. But it was a really, another really nice solid headshot. Absolutely poleaxed that one. The light is really starting to fade now, and this can be a great time to catch up with squirrels around their favourite feeding places. Sure enough, we've got another visitor at one of the hoppers. Well, that was another greedy squirrel. That one was really tucking into the grain. Uh, it was so distracted, it certainly wasn't aware of us lurking here. Um, I could see through the scope that the shot caught it just below the eye, which is arguably a bit lower than ideal, but looking through the scope, it was a very clean kill, and that squirrel is stone dead. The safari is certainly well up to this pest control assignment.
Well, it's been quiet for the last while, but um, I'm not too sorry because we need to get away now. The light's starting to go and I ought to be out of this pen before the pheasants start going to roost. Um, this session was really all about getting to grips with the Brocock XR Safari and all I can say is it's given a terrific account of itself. Now obviously, as I said at the outset, it's got the beautiful Safari stock, but for me, it's things like the trigger, the slick side lever magazine system, and the fact that it's Huma regulated, super consistent. It's just a really nice gun to be using out in the field. Um, I'll do my best to get a full review of it done before too long, and I'm just really looking forward to getting out with it again. The brand new Brocock Safari XR proving itself to be very comfortable in the hunting field there. Next up, I'm taking a look at a compact compressor that could prove to be invaluable during lockdown. I'm sure we can all think of plenty of things that we've been missing out on during lockdown. For me, a really big one is a haircut, but of course, a lot of people are really missing out on their shooting. Now, plenty of us are lucky enough to be able to shoot in our backyards and even on farmland that's close to home. But even then, people that shoot pre-charged air guns are going to be really missing something else, and that is access to compressed air. One solution is to use a stirrup pump. Now I've been using the Hill Mark IV for quite some time and although it's brilliant, it does still feel like a bit of a chore for those of us that have been spoilt with scuba tanks. What a lot of people don't realise is that Hill also make a brilliant compressor. This is the EC3000 and it's really well suited to home use. Now I did take a quick look at it a few months ago but now seems like a really good time to look at it in a bit more detail. Retailing at £870, this is not a cheap accessory. However, it should last for years, it'll definitely get you out of a fix, and of course you can always club together with friends to share the cost. What that outlay gets you is a really well-made compressor. At about 75 decibels, it's fairly quiet, and it's also very compact and easy to transport. The EC3000 looks like a pretty sophisticated piece of kit, and it is, but it's also extremely easy to use. It comes supplied with easy to follow instructions and the necessary lubricants, and once you've topped them up, all you need to do is attach your air gun's usual filler probe to the hose. Then all you need to do is plug the compressor into the mains, connect to your air gun, and you're ready to go. This compressor has a filter to ensure that the air that goes into your gun is clean and dry. It runs off of mains electricity, and once it's switched on, you can input the pressure that you want your fill to go to, and you can even choose between bar and PSI. Now, to make your selection, you turn the dial to select the pressure. Maximum output is 300 bar. Once you've got the pressure you want your fill to go to, simply press down on the dial to input that setting. With the pressure set, turn the dial until you see the start display. Press the dial now and the filling starts. While filling is underway, you will see current working pressure and your set fill pressure displayed along with current working temperature. If the temperature gets too hot, the compressor will pause and then restart when the temperature has fallen. You can also choose to cancel the fill by choosing the dial and selecting Fill Abort. If you leave the fill running, the compressor will keep on going until it reaches your chosen fill pressure and will then cut out automatically. It is surprisingly fast and you can expect the EC3000 to fill a fairly typically sized air gun cylinder from 100 bar to 250 bar in less than two minutes. 
Once the fill is complete, all you do is slacken off the bleed valve to let off the pressure, then disconnect your gun and you're ready to head out shooting. Buying your own compressor is quite an investment, but this is a very good one and if you can justify the outlay, it's certainly worth its asking price. And of course, you're also getting the trusted Hill brand. I've got a couple of friends who have these and they are certainly glad they have. Not only has it got them out of a spot and kept them shooting during lockdown, it also means they don't have to travel back and forth getting bottles filled when we are allowed out and about. So if you don't want to be dependent on other people for your air supply and you don't fancy the effort of using a pump, this is certainly something to consider. Don't miss the award-winning Air Gun Shooter magazine. It's packed with hunting features, reviews, tactics and insight to help you become an even more successful shooter. Get your copy today, in shops or online. That's all for this week, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.